was born in a saying, he said in local government, I was told the day was a Sunday on the 22nd of August, 1954. I started my primary school also in my village at the local authority demonstration school from where I proceeded as we had in those days to the middle school. Students usually st stay for three years, but I stayed for only two years and proceeded to the college secondary school in 1970. In two years thereafter, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria changed the school calendar. We started with January to December, and it was changed to September to July. So I finished in June 1974. Between that time and January 1975, I was in the classroom teaching the elementary. And I proceeded to do my A-level papers, which I concluded 1976, 1977, I entered the then University of Ibadan, I mean University of Ife in, in, in 1977, September. I concluded in the University of Ife, which is now Obafemi Awolowo University, in 1970, 1977 to 1980, from where I proceeded to the Nigerian Law School, Lagos, I got called to bar July 1981. I went to do my national youth service in the then Ondo State. I concluded in July 1982, and in that same July, I resume in the Ministry of Justice of my home state or your state. There I was as state council and as senior state council, approaching to be principal state council when I voluntarily left service to private practice. had a stop by the chambers of the senior advocate of Nigeria in Ibadan for a couple of months. And at the close of the legal year, I went to open my own chambers in Lukayo de Ariwola and Company in Oyo town. There I was practicing all over Nigeria. If I was invited to the bench and was sworn in on the 2nd of November 1992, Justice of the Court of Appeal 
in Kaduna in 2011. The nominee, and now um, the questions and the comments, and uh, we'll start. And let me remind us it's three minutes maximum, two questions per person. Yes, we. Uh, to you on this appointment. My Lord, this is not the first time you're going through the confirmation uh, proceedings. My belief is the moment you were screened and deemed fit and qualified to serve in the Court of Appeal. And thereafter, another screening and confirmation in your elevation to the Supreme Court. To me, you are as good, fit and proper person to serve as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Just a matter of time. No surprises. I also extend my heartfelt thanks to Mr. President for doing just two things. One, finding you worthy, and two, making this nomination early. Unlike in the past when we had some challenges. My Lord, it is the dream of every lawyer serving in the bench to rise to the number one position of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. This is a very, very consequential appointment in this elevation. My Lord, not too long ago, those of us who belong to the legal profession, we felt, I would say, a little embarrassed, but very, very embarrassed by certain events that occurred in the Senate. We know as judges, we told you should be seen, not heard, except while you're uh, in your courts. And therefore, I understand your constraints, and indeed the constraints of all of the judges of the court. But for the first time, not only were they seen, indeed they were heard by way of a joint correspondence. I hate to use the word petition, but a joint correspondence that was uh, endorsed by pretty much every member of the court. My Lord, by way of a comment and reassurance which I'm seeking from you, we want to, we want to prevent a reoccurrence of that development. And the way to prevent it is this, I want an assurance from you. The Supreme Court, the, the judicial arm, is a creation of the Constitution just like we are. We are section uh, uh, section four. You are six. We are, you are just as important as we are. We don't want the courts coming to us camp in hand asking for arms. We don't want that. Whatever benefit we are entitled to here as members of uh, uh, the relative arm, you should also be receiving that, and we want you to insist on it. Insist on it. A situation where judges will be told to leave their chambers by 4 o'clock because there's no diesel. Why judges are actually being rationed on when they can travel abroad for courses or not travel is very, very embarrassing. So I want a reassurance from you that you will insist on the right of judiciary that whatever is due the judiciary is given to you. Now, my question. Uh, the Sungush colleagues. The, 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 this is... This is a this is the deputy president of the Senate we are talking about. So DSV. They forgot that they elected me. 
Now, having said that, uh, my Lord, I like for you to speak on your vision and your plan for repositioning of the Nigerian judiciary. Thank you, my Lord. But, my Lord, having listened to you and uh, having watched you closely and uh, having seen your passion, my Lord, I'm happy that you have identified as your core vision issues of reform in our administration of justice, particularly the issues of our rules and procedure of practice. Can your Lordship explain in brief how you hope to achieve this, given the fact that a number of your uh, predecessors had also attempted to deal with uh, these issues? Thank you, my Lord. And I want to say by way of short comment, Mr. President, that it's in the appointment into the leadership of the judiciary in the last decade that we have been able to see compliance with the provisions of our constitution. And it is hoped that this will be extended to other sectors. My Lord, I have two questions. One, there is a growing public concern over the seeming lack of transparency in the appointment of judicial officers at both the state and federal levels. What will you do to ensure transparency and compliance with lay down procedures and global best practice standards? Question number two, my Lord, the judiciary is pivotal to the strengthening of democracy and good governance. If confirmed as the Chief Justice of Nigeria, my Lord, how will you ensure that the judiciary under your leadership is better equipped to perform this role and what would be your strategy to ensure that the judiciary is better funded to enhance the capacity of our judicial officers and staff? Mr. President, thank you. My Lord, I have sentiments attached to your nomination. When I wanted to marry my wife, I spent two days in the same because my father-in-law was living there. And so even if I ask no question, I will support the decision of this honorable house in confirming you today. <laughs> this honorable Senate, this hello chambers of the Senate in confirming you, my Lord. My question is, it is saying, my Lord, that justice de delay is justice denied. <clears throat> you agree with me, and most lawyers and Nigerians, that we've witnessed unnecessary delay in the administration of justice in our country. The Supreme Court suffers that the most, maybe because we need more justice at our court, and whether my Lord will subscribe to the fact that more justice should be appointed to the Supreme Court, that is one. And my Lord, under your leadership, if confirmed today, how will you address the issue of this delay in the administration of justice in our country? Thank you. I have read the NJC document that recommended you for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. I'm fanatically attached to use of words. When you look at the recital and the contributions of all the justices in that uh, meeting, your qualification was what stood you out against two other colleagues of yours. 
and I do know that constitutionally, appointment into judicial offices are based strictly on seniority, of which gave you an age. But you see in the document, the recommendation was that you are a preferred candidate. My thinking will have been that the document should say you are the most qualified, which is the norm, but it's okay. My major concern, sir, is this. Like my colleague have said, there are really growing concerns about appointment of judicial officers in this country. There are really concerns. And you know, having traveled this long, you know what it used to be and what it is now. If confirmed out the Chief Justice of Nigeria, what will you do, you know, differently to ensure that we reverse back to that era where integrity, honesty, commitment to professionalism, and respect for the institution of judiciary at the synchronous for qualification for appointment into these offices? That's the question. Thank you, sir. I'm happy that uh, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Mohagege, started from what he decided not to call petitions, even though many papers and the press that accosted me on the day I was sworn in as acting said justices of the Supreme Court wrote petition. We did not write petition. It was an internal memo of, not of the court, even but of justices. There were 15 justices of the Supreme Court then with the chief justice. And we had either individually as friends, as colleagues, or in group at meetings raised certain issues that were touching on persons, working conditions of justices, such as some of us not having accommodation at all particularly amongst my brothers who were appointed in 2020. Some have still not gotten accommodation. Now ask me, where do they live? Some live very far away. And that was why on Monday when we were to sit, we had to wait for a colleague who stayed quite far to the court. Then some vehicles have not been provided our entitlement as uh, justices of Supreme Court to attend workshops were claimed not to be provided for, whereas in the budget there were these provisions. When we realized that each time we had a meeting and we took this up, our brother, the Honorable the Chief Justice then probably forgot or didn't remember to take care of it. Sometimes the management of the court will still tell the Chief Justice there was no money. So we sat together and put something in paper. No secretary typed this. One of us who was secretary to a committee, which was then the welfare committee of uh, the court, typed it and we all sat and signed the 14 of us. And after signing this memo, we took it up to deliver it personally to our brother, the chief justice. 
we didn't allow anybody to see this memo. How it came on pages of newspaper is still a miracle to us. We, we, we wouldn't know because we never made it available. In fact, no, no justice had copy of this memo. We just read it to ourselves and we agreed and we signed and took it to our brother. So I got on the newspapers, uh, if you like, got leaked to the press. We were embarrassed ourselves and we all met with the Chief Justice again to say, what happened? We wanted his lordship to get the management of the court to meet with us so that we could let them know we had no problem with our number one. We agreed. The Chief Justice gave us a time and we all gathered again in the, in the chambers of the Chief Justice Conference room, only to realize that there was no plan to bring any member of the management. The Chief Justice himself was surprised that we were around again. His Lordship probably forgot. In fact, he said so. He apologized that he forgot to invite them. And we left. So there was no petition either to or against the Chief Justice. We remained brothers and we were acting as one. Even though we had our complaints, like uh, the distinguished senator said, you know, when there was a circular that moved around, that, uh, you know, the, the generator would be switched off at four o'clock, when sometimes we may be sitting in court till six. And I had, had to climb up the staircase when I arrived the court before 8 a.m. Because the circular said, generator won't be switched on until 8 a.m. So any justice that came before 8 must either have to stay there if he cannot climb, or climb the stairs to the second to the third floor. We felt that was uh, embarrassing enough. We, we, we told our brother, the Chief Justice, and uh, nothing was done to it. I mean, he said he didn't know, you know, what was happening. That was exactly what happened. It was not a petition. The justices were not protesting, you know, no. It was not a protest. We couldn't have carried placards, you know. Uh, we just uh, thought to put uh, our complaint on paper for our brother, the Chief Justice. That was all. As to Ariwala's fission, I haven't gone through all the courts, all the hierarchy of courts. And uh, I haven't stayed this far. This is my 11th year in the Supreme Court. I know that judiciary, even though said to be the third arm of government, cannot work alone as an independent arm of government. The Supreme Court or the judiciary, if you like, needs the other two arms of government mostly. Particularly, this honorable Senate, in that the judiciary of Nigeria is suffering of lack of funds. We're trying to introduce technology. This has gone far in, in, in other climes. Technology is so germane, so important that it is my desire to introduce like key filing and uh, electronic service of processes By October, when we are doing our legal year, work has gone very far. The Supreme Court will start off in the way we have uh, computerized 
and introduced in one of the three courts in the court. Great technology that lawyers may soon address the court from the comfort of their chambers once they are properly briefed. Like many of us will have had Zoom meetings, Zoom consultation with our friends, our doctors, and so on from far away in foreign lands. We are starting that soon. What has been our problem is fun. And I believe and happy that if this honorable Senate is aware that we need to move forward, we need to advance, we need fund so to do. So by the time our budget is presented, we believe it will pass through. There's need to improve on the way we file processes, the way we, I mean, we still do a lot of writing, despite the brief writing of counsel in respect of matters. Justice is still record in long hand. But this will change this time around because we are engaging stenographers that will have knowledge, great knowledge of technical terms, you know, legal terms, because I've discovered that some of those engaged will misunderstand what uh, counsel say in their address or in their brief. So we are engaging stenographers and we're going to do transcription of, uh, you know, submissions, addresses. We've been doing front loading of pleadings, which I soon go on front loading evidence, front loading exhibits, so that cancer may not need to come to court. We've always said if people come from far away, Maiduguri, from far down Port Harcourt, and they get to court only to discover that the court is not sitting. That is not too good. So, it is my desire to plead with this honorable Senate to approve our budget to do this because it will affect every one of us. I believe that's why we have checks and balances. The judiciary cannot operate without the Senate, nor without the executive arm of government. Indeed, that's what has brought us all here today. The, the, the judicial arm of government having played its role by, by nominating and recommending, the executive having made its choice by appointing it is required that the Senate must confirm. Otherwise, the nominee of the president will be sent back to him. But we shall make progress at the next stage of the judiciary of this country. On the rules of court, it must have been read in our memo that for over three years, rules of court were prepared, you know, and we haven't seen, it doesn't seem light of day. Because this is just the Supreme Court. And there are other courts in the judiciary of this nation. But we want to, in the Supreme Court, give the lead, amend our rules and procedure so that we'll move from the archaic procedure that we, 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 we've always engaged 
so that you know businessmen investors we know that the courts are functioning and they are being effective not just giving judgments but we are doing effective services that's why we're going to amend the rules appropriately we're going to meet with all the heads of courts aside from the state high courts in the past we used to have common rules of court but each court is entitled to have its own rules of procedure which will enable the courts function effectively we have said the machinery in motion and as to how we go about it the following week barely five days after i was sworn in acting capacity i had met with my brother justices of the supreme court and we agreed and set up four committees we were left with 13 of us the 12 to which i am the 13th were set up into three man committee each the number two in the court has the Committee on Finance and Accounts. The next to head litigation and head. The next to head administration and library. And another committee for the welfare of the justices and staff of the court. These committees have set in motion since July before we went on vacation. And things have begun to give a different look. That's why some of us are still on their workshop now in Dubai to learn more about uh, you know, administration of justice because knowledge is germane. You, you learn every day, you learn every day. So, because you know, in fact, the, 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 the Committee on Finance and Accounts had to meet with those in charge of accounts few few days ago. I believe because a tree does not make forest. If the Chief Justice insists on knowing everything, calling on the management, that is how they get misled. So, these different committees of three, which make up with the 12 justices there, have been working very hard. And we have started making progress. We just came back only on the 12th of September. Most of us couldn't go on vacation because it is our court. We told the management, it is our court. All in the management staff are to assist us to do our best to give justice to this country. So we have been we have been working very hard to ensure that such things that happen that made us to have to now write to our brother justice, the chief justice, will not occur again. There will be nothing like uh, you know protesting or complaint when all the justices are involved in the administration of the court. Like Senator Bamidele Okoyemi said, on the appointment of judicial officers. Uh, the appointment of judicial officers is provided for in the Constitution. To be appointed to the High Court judge, the Constitution says, you must be 10 years in practice to go to court of appeal 12 years and to be a justice of Supreme Court 15 years. That is what most people think is all about. And, uh, you know, so they aspire. 
But I'm happy that the National Judicial Council plays a great role in appointment of judicial officers in this country. The state will sit, propose, recommend. These ones will be subjected to interview. It must be an active practice. And I've always told some of our people, you must search yourself, know your worth. To be a judicial officer, you know, it's not a, I beg your pardon, palongo. It's not, it's not a dance that you can learn on the way. You've got to know yourself, know your worth. That's why we should play to ourselves to ask whoever is our nominee, can you do this job? And that's why most of them, and in some states, we are said to be only seen and not heard. We cannot be hard to complain. We keep quiet often, and we are denied of our entitlements because we cannot be heard or be seen to complain. Maybe nobody may have even heard of our complaint if the, the, our, our memo had not been leaked to the press. And then we are called names, justices dancing nakedly in the market square. I mean, that, that, was, that was insulting to the least. So, I want to plead again, Your Excellency, the President of the Senate and distinguished senators, that when we have our budget presented, please look into it. And that's why we've said, and we are doing that, justices must participate in the preparation and defending of our budget. I mean, I'm seeing my brothers, all of you, I mean, will not see me seated to come and defend our budget. We are not to speak, but the admin people, yes, we will bring it up there. And we look and we have, uh, you know, greeted, what are we doing here is our budget. <laughs> we are not to be doing that. There's so much work in the, in the court. So, we shall make progress, you know, once we have enough fund so to do. And uh, it is my desire to meet with the president who has presented my name, that I'm his choice, to say the only way we can move is for us to have fund the judiciary of Nigeria must be properly funded. Judges should not be seen to go cap in hand. No. We should not beg for our entitlement. We should not. We have too much to do than to go about begging. And I'm sure you are aware he who goes a begging are sorrowing. May we not go a sorrowing. So, that much with the appointment of judicial officers. We, 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 are, we are supposed to be constitutionally 21 justices. But we are 13 now. We just discovered on Monday when we started sitting that 12 appeals were listed for justices to deal with. 12 appeals on one day. So in three days, you can imagine how many appeals we would take. And how do we write this judgment? We need to appoint more justices. But as we said, the rules will have to be amended. 
there are many cases that should not be allowed to come up. Many cases should be allowed to st stop at the court of appeal. It's only by the constitutional amendment that that can happen. And the constitution can only be amended not by the courts, but by this distinguished house, Senate. National Assembly should please help. Help us, the country, help the nation. Mending this one must end here. And once you say so, that is the law. That is the law. It becomes the law. I believe with the Senate President and the distinguished senators, we shall make progress on that. Senator Suswan. Distinguished colleagues, please, let's listen to my Lord. He, we have asked him questions, and he's responding to those questions. And the questions, just hold on, please. The questions we ask were the first round of questions. It's an opportunity for us to, to know, to understand. And it's also an opportunity for him and judiciary to enlighten the entire country. So please, let's allow him to respond to these questions, and then let's see how the next set will look like. Thank you. Oh, yes. If justice is delayed, it will end up denying justice. But as the saying goes, if you rush justice, you end up denying justice. How? If a suspect gets him to the dock to be tried and he says please my lord my key witness is not available give me an adjournment and you said no you have to close your case that is rushing justice and you have denied him justice but with the with the with the administration of criminal justice reformed that is now in practice. There are a number of adjournments that the court must take. There are a number of days a matter must be dealt with. Just like in some political cases, there is provision that a matter must be had and concluded within a certain time. And if you are aggrieved, you want to appeal, your appeal once filed must be disposed of within a certain time. If you have complaint, you want to file, you must file within 14 days. The filing, as I've always said, when laws are made, it is what the court says the law is, that is the law. Otherwise, it remains lifeless in the law books. So, that 14 days, people miscounted. 14 days starts not like you can't money. It starts from the date, that's what the law says, from the date of the occurrence of that event you are complaining about. So, many people have filed processes on the 15th day, when the law talks about 14 days. You start counting from the following day, which is the practice. But that law says from the day of the occurrence of that event, if you are challenging the presentation or the declaration of a different person from you who won the, the, the primary, the day is the day of the announcement. 14 days begins to run from that day and then to 14 days. 
If you file within 14 days, the court must dispose of the matter within 180 days. Not one day after 180 days. People had uh, challenged filing or, or, or tendering of documents up to Supreme Court, and by then they had gone back because 180 days continued to run after them. The Court of Appeal to Supreme Court, by the time it, they go back to the trial court, the trial judge says, sorry, I can no longer entertain your matter. What do you mean? It is 180 days. <laughs> Statutory limitation. Then the Court of Appeal, within 60 days. The Supreme Court, within 60 days. Particularly the Supreme Court, which is the final court, which is the apex court, cannot go beyond that date also. So, yes, justice delayed is justice denied. But you can be sure that even though the will of justice may be sluggish, may move sluggishly, but it's only slow, not sluggish, but you can be sure that it is steady. Because if you rush it, you will end up denying justice. And of course, when justice is denied, you may not feel it until you are denied of justice. That's where you feel it. So we are familiar with that, and we're going to I mean, A meeting is being proposed with heads of various courts so that they will be taken along. You know, we won't run the Supreme Court alone. I've been having the maximum cooperation of my brother justices of the Supreme Court, and I'm quite happy about that. Distinguished senators, you can see. The only ones that are not here, as I said, you know, are for a workshop in Dubai. All my brother justice here, they know we are running the system together. It is not a court of chief justice. It is a Supreme Court that we are all serving. And we must not fail. Thank you very much. Please, distinguished colleagues, our colleagues here, that the nominee may not take a bow and go our rule so. Even if I have a different opinion. Because for me, it would have been an opportunity for us to learn and for Nigerians to also understand. But just hold on, just hold on. But this is, please, this is the home of democracy. This is the home of democracy. And in democracy, the majority rules. So is it the opinion of this Senate that my Lord, the nominee, takes a bow and go? having responded very well to all the questions raised so far. Is it the view of this Senate that he takes a bow? Yes. My Lord. The distinguished colleagues. Distinguished colleagues, please. Oh, dear. Uh, Chief Whip, please let them sit down, please. The Swedish colleagues, please let's sit down. Oh my God.
our we have been covered live and um i think we can do better than what we have done honestly this was a screening of the chief justice of nigeria so i think we we just utilize the remaining time we have but well we we've just finished the screening and some of us wanted to ask uh, some questions most of us wanted the nominee to take about and go because he had already answered many questions i i had my opinion but my opinion doesn't matter here once i preside it's what majority of you want that will go with. So those of us in minority, those of us who wanted to ask questions and were not able to do, please, I appeal to you. This is one Senate. If we are not able to ask questions today, we may ask tomorrow. So there should be no hard feelings that uh, we are not gender friendly or we are not this one. We are, we are everything. It's just that the the situation demanded that the nominee took a bow and go because that was the majority opinion and we stand by that so we do the so i appeal to all of us to please uh, take it uh, as part of the practice in parliament the majority will always have its way we do approval at this stage will the senate approve the nomination of Honorable Justice Olukai Ode Arwola for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Leader of the Senate, plenary. The Senate in the Committee of the Hall considered the request of Mr. President C&C for the confirmation of a nominee for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria in accordance with Section 231, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. The nominee answered questions from the single senators on judiciary matters and a number of topical issues. Thereafter, the committee approved the nomination of Honorable Justice Olukayo De Arola as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the committee of the whole? Yes. Thank you. Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Olukayo De Arola? for appointment as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. The nomination of Honorable Justice Olukai Ode Arwala is hereby confirmed as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. Because the nominee is in acting capacity at the moment, and he has only, I think, three or four days, left in the three months of his acting, I would suggest that we pass divorce and proceedings before we leave today, so that we're able to uh, communicate, uh, to avoid uh, any, any crisis. Thank you very much.